Hey, three steps to a more successful New Year's resolution. That's what we're about to talk about. Awesome. Cool. Good to know. <laughs> now I feel like we should just jump into it, but let's do it. Let's tell the people about ourselves. No, that's boring. Okay. Let's tell the people our favorite colors. Okay. <laughs> you know, you make it really easy. <laughs> Okay, well, it's okay. So we're getting into this because we obviously it's almost New Year's and it, Not only is this about New Year's resolutions, but it's also just about your goals So even if you're not strictly making a New Year's resolution, this is something that can help you just create better goals so that you Are more successful and so it's more effective so that the steps that you take to reach those goals are Are more effective and you're that you're more likely to get there. So that's what all of this is about um, right now, you may be watching this later, but we are right in between Christmas and New Year's. So we're in that weird space where it's like, we have to argue about who, uh, wh when we're going to we take down the, the tree. Christmas tree. <laughs> I vote now. <laughs> and I'm all about leaving it up longer, which is funny because I also don't like putting it up too early. So I don't know. We're, we're on both ends of that spectrum there. But, um, all right, well, I guess we can just jump into it. Yeah. I think we should. Okay, so let's let's start with this. We've got to be honest. First of all, most New Year's resolutions do not pan out. Most people are lucky to make it to February if they even get started at all. And when that happens, there is a reason for it. But guess what? It is not because you aren't disciplined enough. Mm. It also has nothing to do with lack of motivation. Even though you might not be motivated, that's not the reason why these resolutions don't tend to pan out. And it isn't because you just don't have time. So all of these things can definitely play a role in throwing you off track, but they're not the real problem. The actual source of the setback starts at the beginning. And to make a more successful New Year's resolution, you've got to follow three very specific steps, which we're going to talk about. But first, I want to get into just I want to make sure that you aren't starting off with a mindset that is destined to fail in the first place. So every year, this time of year, late December, early January, we end up getting a bunch of phone calls and messages from people, new people who don't know us. They're just looking for something. They want to lose some weight. And there's nothing wrong with that. But unfortunately, what happens is and they don't realize this, but they're often looking for something that isn't actually going to solve their problem. They, they know that quick fixes don't work, so it's not like they're coming to us for that. But what they don't realize is that most of the popular diets and exercise programs, the, type, the, the, kind of, the kind of programs that people sign up for typically in January, they're still a type of quick fix, regardless of the amount of time you spend on them. Because the quick fix mentality really just comes down to a lack of forethought. Whether it's actually something easy like taking a pill that has questionable claims and promises or if it's something that's really more demanding like a restrictive diet or a group workout program that's designed to like be super tough and kick your butt every day. Or even a gym that you walk away feeling sore every day and that's their goal. Yeah, whether it's the simple pill or the tough thing that you're going to do. Neither one is realistic for long-term success. And so if you haven't thought about these things, you're going to end up doing a quick fix, even if it's something that you spend a little bit more time on. So I'm sure that the people who are out there who follow us, I know you're not looking for a pill to help you lose 30 pounds in three days or something like that. But I but, mean, I would do it if it was real. If it existed, <laughs> sure, why not? I mean, if it were real and it actually worked and it and was healthy. And somewhat safe. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it doesn't exist. You're, and you, you know that. You know that it doesn't. But the thing is, most quick fixes, or at least not all of them, are that obvious. So, mm -hmm. and to identify a plan that looks legitimate on the outside, it still really only takes just a little bit of consideration. So for example, if you have trouble working out regularly because you're busy with your kids or, or maybe you've got like past injuries that tend to crop up whenever you start exercising again, it really doesn't take a whole lot of thought to go, hey, maybe a daily intense workout program isn't a great fit for me. Maybe it's something I can keep up with. Yeah. Or with a diet, it only kind of takes a minute of honest thinking to go, uh, you know what? It sounds like 
this plan, this diet is going to have me cooking two separate dinners every single night just so that I can stay on the diet and feed my family. And that's not going to work for me, at least not for long. So whenever you try to, whenever you try to tackle something new without taking the time to evaluate if it's realistic, if it's something that you can actually stick with, whether, whether that plan that you choose is something that's inherently bad or if it's technically perfect on paper, it's still, you're just kind of succumbing to that quick fix mentality of, I'm just gonna do this and, and it's not gonna work. Now I will say the best answer to this problem is to let us come up with a plan for you because we know the questions to ask we, and, the, and the strategies that are gonna be the most effective based on your lifestyle. So we can help you build habits that are possible to stick with for forever. Um, but if you are going to do it yourself, and especially if you're starting, if you're resolving to start something in January, there are three specific steps to follow for a better shot at success. So those are the three things we're going to get into now. Let's do it. Number one, know your real goal. So people who aren't looking for a quick fix usually don't only want to lose weight. Not that there's anything wrong with, with wanting to lose weight we help our clients do that. That's a big part of what a lot of people want, but typically there's a bigger goal in mind, even if it's subconscious, even if it's something you haven't thought about mm -hmm. yet. So you need to get to what's the why behind your goal. Do you want to lose weight because you want to have more energy? So you, and, and do you want more energy so that you can be more present for your family? Maybe you're hoping to build some strength in your back or your knees so that you don't have as much pain when you're being active, going on hikes, or just taking stairs, any of that stuff. When you, when you think you know your goal, whatever you think it is, you need to keep asking yourself why it's your goal, pretty much until you can't answer it anymore. So be, to yourself, be like, you know, a little kid who I know every child on earth has gone through the phase of why, why, why? And do that to yourself when you're, when you're asking a goal. You want to lose weight? Great. Wait, you want to lose weight? That's great. Why? Why do you want to do it? Well, I want to have more energy. Okay, but why? Because I want to, I want to spend more time with my family, whatever it is. Yeah. I think last year we did a video where we said, ask yourself why at least three times. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, dig into all the whys. And then when we take on a new client, that's a huge part of the first call we have. We ask three or four different ways why this is important to you to really help you understand what it is you want so that we can help you get there without it just being weight loss focused. And once you've asked yourself those whys how, and you get to that real goal, that's when you're going to actually be able to come up with a better plan for success so that you don't just do something like starve yourself because you want to lose weight and and that's you know something like starving yourself is not healthy or realistic so you don't want to end up doing something that's not going to help you not going to be healthy for you and not going to work long term so that's number one is is you got to figure out what your real goal is number two you need to break it down so once you know your real goal you got to break down the steps that it'll take to reach it if you want more energy if you've figured out, okay, I want more energy for my kids. So energy, that's, that's the thing. Okay. So you, you may need to focus on getting an extra hour of sleep. I know we talk about diet and exercise a lot, but it could be that sleep is the thing that's holding you back for something like energy. Yeah. Or you might need to improve the quality of the foods that you eat. Maybe it is diet related. Maybe you just need more nutrients from your food that are going to help you stay more um, energized. Mm. And by the way, just as a side note, if you had just, if you had skipped step one and you had just set your goal to, I want to lose weight and you didn't take any extra time to think about it, you may just try to eat less, which would actually end up having a negative effect on your sleep. It would have a negative effect on your nutrition and ultimately your energy would just get worse. So that's why it's super important to know what your real goal yeah. is because you could end up doing something that not only doesn't work, but actually backfires completely so but don't stop there so okay let's say you wanted to work on energy and so you're thinking okay i'm going to work on getting an extra hour of sleep so now you got to continue to break it down don't just stop with the with the here's my plan i think i think this is where people have the the most trouble where they're like what is yeah. worth my time to start doing what is even 
like worth doing and figuring out how to break it down that makes sense for their busy lives. For sure. And that's where we can definitely help. Yeah. But if you're doing it yourself, you have to do this. This is a necessary part of the the process. But just acknowledge like this is a hard part. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I would say it's probably because it's hard. It's probably the most commonly skipped step mm. is just, you know, okay, I want to lose weight. You might break that down further, obviously, and go, okay, well, I'm going to start exercising or I'm going to, you know, start eating better or whatever. But most people don't break it down enough yeah. to get to really effective, realistic um, steps, goals that smaller goals that are going to help you get there to that bigger goal. So if, it, if, for example, if you want to get an extra hour of sleep, how are you going to do that? Are you going to create a bedtime routine? What is that going to look like? How are you going to remember to do it? Are you going to set an alarm? Are you going to, you know, do you need to tell your family about it? Do they need to be part of the process so that they understand, hey, I'm going to, at this time each day, you, you need to break it down into that. Or let's say rather than sleep, you are going to work on, okay, um, I need to get more nutrients into my body because I know that I'm not feeding myself well. I'm sure that's holding me back as far as my energy. How are you going to do that? Which nutrients do you need? What are you going to start with? Can you just start with protein? Maybe that's one that a lot of people don't get enough of. And then how are you going to do that? Keep on breaking it down smaller and smaller until you get to the most actionable but realistic step for you. Because you can't necessarily just go, I'm going to start eating. And this is what a lot of people would do just with this example. I'm going to start eating 200 grams of protein every day. <laughs> well, good luck. You're, you're not going to make it to February. Most people anyway. So could you instead go, well, you know what? I could get a serving of protein. I could work on getting one serving of protein at each meal. Yeah. Start there. Start with a palm-sized serving of protein, like what Megan teaches um, with our clients. So the point is to be as specific as possible with your resolution, breaking it down to the, the action that you're actually going to take, rather than just saying, I want to lose 20 pounds. Um, so that's number two. Break it down. Number three is be ready to adapt. Mm. This is another one that I would say is super uncommon and is why people don't have long-term success. Even if they, even if they do, even if you are successful in the beginning and you see some results, this one is going to be what stops you eventually. So hmm. I won't say it's the most important step, but it is, this is probably less common than the one before, as far as just from the long-term perspective. Um, you're going to mess up occasionally. You're not going to be perfect with whatever plan or whatever action you take. You will probably lose progress at some point with whatever goal you're working toward. You're not just going to constantly be making ground. Or your kids are going to get sick or yep. something terrible is going to happen in your life <laughs> where you need to adjust. Yep. And things won't go according to plan for one, whatever that reason is, you need to expect it. And you also need to be prepared for it. Yep. So rather than doing what most people do, which is to just give up once you hit that roadblock, um, you need to adapt, learn from your mistakes, plan the adjustments that you'll make so that it's less likely to happen again. So when you mess up, go, okay, what happened? Where did I go wrong? What can I do in this same situation next time? And then just keep going. Uh, you might even consider at some point adapting by doing something that feels like a step backward. So for example, you're losing some weight and then something happens, like you said, your kids get sick, you can't stick with the plan that you've been with. So maybe, maybe you're at a point where you just need to take a break from weight loss mm -hmm. and work on something else like building strength. Uh, and that maybe you'll feel like, oh, I'm stopping, it's not working, I gotta, this is a step backwards, but it may actually be exactly what you need to be in a better place to make progress a month from now. Mm -hmm. So that's it. So just to summarize the three steps, know your goal, ask the whys, and then break it down, smaller and smaller actions, and then be ready to adapt and change what you're going to do because there's gonna come a point where you have to. It's, it's impossible to not, unless it's some very, very small goal, you're going to have to adapt eventually. The last thing that I want to ask is just whether you should even make a resolution in the first place. So I am a big fan of making goals of some sort. 
I couldn't tell you the last time that I personally have made a New Year's resolution. I'm not against doing them. I happen to think that if something's really important, it's better to start working on it right away rather than like waiting mm. for a certain date. But I also, I don't have a problem with using a fixed point like New Year's to kind of hit reset and go, this is, this is a good starting point for me. So that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you do make a re resolution, whatever you decide to work on, my question to you is this. It's very important. Are you choosing it because it's what you want mm. or because it's what you think you should be doing? I think that is maybe the most important question of all of us. Are you working on not just your goal? That's important too. Like some people want to lose weight and there's really no need. Maybe you're already at a pretty good spot. Maybe you should be working on other things. But I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about, okay, you do want to work on this goal. You want to work on this New Year's resolution. Are the steps that you're taking and the actions that you planned, everything that you did, even when you broke it down and decided, here's what I'm going to do, are those things things that you actually want to do? Or are you just going, oh, well, I know I really should be doing this. I should be working out more often. I should be eating better. We hear that a lot. We hear it a lot. And, and unfortunately, a lot of people do that. They just do the stuff they think they should do. And what ends up happening is they get stuck or they give up because it's not effective or they just it's just something that is not possible for them to be consistent with it because it's not realistic for their life. And so they don't reach their goals in the long run. The three steps that we went over, they can help you avoid that for sure, but you still need to, you still need to think about that question on its own. Um, again, I would just say all of this stuff is very difficult to do on your own in the first place. So we have a free guide that you can look at. It talks about five weight loss myths that are really common and it tells you what to do instead so that you can really lose weight in a more realistic way. So that's something you can start with, or we can just help you as coaches. We can essentially tell you what to do based on your life so that it's stuff that will be realistic and doable for you. If you want the free guide, just message me and we'll send it right over to you. Yeah, and that's it for today. Hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, please comment or send us a direct message. We're happy to answer and help you with it. Have a happy new year and we will see you next week Next year. next year with another video. <laughs> All right. Bye.